Hey everyone. So as promised, I want to give you guys a quick look at all the hardware and software that I use to create the in-vehicle tablet experience that you can see here. And as we go through this video, I know it might seem a little daunting at first with all the different hardware and software that you have to use, but I promise you if you just follow the step-by-step -step instructions laid out in this video, you'll get it up in no time. So let's get started. first step in this process is to try to find the right tablet for you and your vehicle. I came up with three main requirements that you're going to want to look for in the tablet that you choose. One is that it has to be very easy to root. In order to pull off a lot of the software tricks, uh, we use root to be able to do so. Um, and we also need to be able to install exposed framework and have it work on that tablet as well. So you need root plus exposed, but one note is that exposed does not currently work on Android Oreo or Android 8.0 just yet. So you're going to want to find a tablet that runs at least Android Nougat and can be easily rootable. And you can check if your Android tablet is rootable by going to uh, XDA forums and looking up to see if there's uh, any way to unlock the bootloader or install root for your particular device. The second thing you're gonna wanna look for is a tablet that has a lot of RAM. So RAM is very important so that you can multitask and not have to reload applications uh, while you're in a uh, you know a heavy application like Google Maps that is eating a lot of RAM and it closes out other things in the background. You don't want that, so you're gonna to wanna to find a tablet with at least three gigabytes of RAM so that you can support great multitasking and use new things in NuGet like multi-window and have a nice fast experience doing so. Finally, you're gonna to wanna to figure out your mobile data strategy. Now you, one, you can buy a cheaper tablet and actually use your phone to tether to the tablet and get data or you can buy a tablet that actually has an LTE radio built inside of it. And I chose the latter option because I found it's a lot more seamless than having to tether and it's just a lot less uh, headache to deal with, um, but it is more expensive. So you're gonna have to weigh you, uh, your pros and cons. If you do choose, I went with the, the, the Galaxy Tab S3. If you do choose the Galaxy Tab S3 to go with, make sure that uh, you're buying the, uh, the 825 model with nothing at the end, uh, no letter at the end. That works on AT&T in the US. Um, and so to make sure if you're looking for the, the Galaxy Tab S3 that you get the one without any sort of letter at the end if you live in the United States and you want LTE coverage. All right, so for mounting the tablet, there was a couple options that I wanted to play with, um, but I really wanted to figure out a way that I didn't have to modify my vehicle or the tablet to actually mount it. So what I found was, uh, you'll see if I pull this off of the dashboard, what I found worked really uh, well is these 3M command strips. So I put 3M command strips on the actual dashboard itself, and then I mounted them to the tablet. And what this does is allow it to be very easy to, uh, to you saw how easy it was to pull off and how easy it is to pull on. You just essentially line it up um, and then you just press and then you have the, the tablet mounted. So what I was trying to figure out was, is this gonna be sturdy enough for a lot of the bumps in the road and you, you know, if you hit some potholes, is it going to fall off? And I've never, in the last two and a half years for using a tablet and vehicle with this solution, I've never had an issue with uh, any bumpy roads. So it's uh, it's a great way of being able to pull off the tablet when needed and put it back on without modifying your vehicle. All right, now's the time for the fun part. Let's get all the software set up and configured. Now, before moving on to the next step, make sure that you are rooted and you've installed Exposed before proceeding uh, on these next steps. So I'm going to assume that you've already rooted and you've installed Exposed Framework. So you're gonna need those before you continue. All right, so once you have those installed, we're gonna head over to the Play Store and download an app called Exposed Edge Pro. Now you can get the free version out of the gate if you would like just to test things out, but I highly recommend the pro version. It's just a high quality piece of software and allows all of this stuff to be possible. So support the dev for sure on this application. So I already have this installed, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it. And what we're gonna do first is set up the tablet to automatically turn off and turn on airplane mode when you lose power. And when it gains power when you, or when you turn the car back on, we wanna wake the tablet back up and turn off airplane mode so it connects to all your devices and to LTE or tethered to your phone. So to do that, what we do is we swipe down here to uh, more triggers, click on more triggers, and then you'll also see that we have power connected and power disconnected. So go ahead and click on power disconnected and what we're gonna do is that as soon as the tablet loses power, we're going to do multi-actions. So on power disconnected, we're gonna scroll all the way down until we see multi-action. Click on multi-action so you can add multiple things uh, when power is disconnected. 
And then the first thing we're gonna do is uh, is hit home. So I like when the power is disconnected to always go back to the home screen so I'm greeted with a nice home screen when I turn the car back on. This is completely optional, obviously. You don't have to do this. I just think it's a nice little uh, nice little enhancement to the overall experience. Uh, but the biggest thing we wanna do is we want to set airplane mode to on. So we're gonna add another action and scroll all the way to um, airplane mode here. And then you're gonna to wanna to turn on airplane mode when power is disconnected. So, so far we're gonna go home, turn on airplane mode, and last but not least, we wanna sleep the actual tablet so it goes to sleep. And then hit the check mark on the top right, which will save that. So now you'll see on power disconnected, we're gonna go home, turn on airplane mode, and then put the tablet to sleep. All right, now we're going to do the opposite on power connected. So click on power connected, and again, go back to multi-action at the very, oops, at the very bottom here, and click on add. And so this is on power connected, so what we're gonna wanna do is click on the sleep wake up and wake up the tablet, and then add uh, another, another option to, uh, let's see here, turn airplane mode uh, to off. And then go ahead and hit the check mark on the top. And so now for power, when power is reapplied from the vehicle to the tablet, the tablet screen should wake up and then turn airplane mode off. And all of your previous connection settings should just toggle back to where they were before they got turned off with airplane mode and you should be all up and running. All right, so the next step to get the controller up and running is to install a new firmware on the controller that makes the controller itself emulate keyboard touches. Now the controller I'm using is the 8-bit do and 30 Pro controller. You can find it on Amazon and here's a, a picture and a photo of it. I like this controller mainly because it has uh, these joysticks here and it's just an overall nice controller and it's got these little LED lights that glow at night which is kind of cool. Um, but this controller out of the box doesn't work that well with exposed edge. And what you need to do is you have to go to the uh, 8-bit do homepage here. Uh, so just go to 8bit2.com then click on support click on firmware and download the legacy firmware uh, for the N30 Pro controller. So if you download this, you're gonna get a, uh, a new firmware file that has a built-in updater. So what you're gonna do is go to the update tools folder and it, it depends on what OS you're running, but I'm running Windows here. And then just double click the executable and it will walk you through the setup process to get the firmware, the legacy firmware loaded onto the N30 controller. And you need this mainly because it remaps all of the different uh, buttons on the N30 controller to actual keyboard commands, which we're then gonna use in the next step in Exposed Edge. All right, one thing to note before you pair your 8-bit2 controller to the tablet is that after you've loaded the legacy firmware, you have to pair your 8-bit2 controller in mode two or Bluetooth keyboard mode so it emulates key commands. And so what you do is turn your controller off, make sure it's off, uh, and then hold the power button plus the B button at the same time and wait for it to boot. And when you do that, you should see the blue LED blink as it shows here two times per second uh, to let you know that you're in mode two and then you'll be emulating keyboard commands on any button press. And then you compare it to your actual tablet. All right, so once you got your controller paired to your uh, tablet in keyboard mode, we're gonna go ahead and reopen Exposed Edge Pro. And then you're gonna to wanna to turn on the check mark on the keys row here, so we enable key support. Click on keys, and you'll notice there's quite a few default things here. You don't have to worry about those. You just wanna scroll all the way to the very bottom where it says add, click on add, and then press any button on the 8-bit2 controller. I'm gonna go ahead and press on the right of the D-pad, and you'll see that it says, okay, key code D-pad right, hit okay. And then once you, you'll you see it be added at the very end of the list here, click on the checkbox, and then click on the actual uh, uh, down arrow here. And then now you have a lot of options that uh, you can do on either just clicking it once or pressing it once, double pressing or long pressing. And so what I have in my car is that if, uh, because I have it oriented vertically, D-pad right is actually D-pad down for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on home. And now that I have home, I'm gonna go ahead and press the D-pad right on my 8 controller, and it sends me right back home uh, when I press that button based on that command. Now I can do pretty much whatever I want with that command. I could, uh, I could go back, I could launch an application, I can do other things but, and, and set things based on long presses or double presses. But this is the general concept that you can remap all of the different buttons on the controller to do things inside of Android based on mapping these buttons to all the different actions that you see with inside of uh, Exposed Edge Pro here.
All right, now let's say you want this button to do something differently depending on which app you're in. So this can get a little bit more complicated, but it's not too bad. The first thing you want to do is go to the application that you're interested in that button doing something in. So for example, let's say in Spotify, I want that button to press the library button on the very bottom right hand corner. So I, if I press it, I'm going to essentially want that to happen. So the first thing you want to do is just no, uh, note the location of that button on screen. So I know it's in the bottom right uh, area here. And what I'm going to do is just memorize where that location is and then relaunch Exposed Edge. And then scroll all the way down to where it says Gesture Records and click on Gesture Records. And then add a new gesture record. And then you're going to have to press uh, with your finger on the actual tablet where you think that original location was. And you'll see this tiny little dot at the bottom right. Um, and then you can press any button. Uh, I usually use the volume buttons to go back and save it. And you'll see now that uh, you have um, this thing here, which what I usually do is just tap on this and rename this um, to something so that uh, it makes it easier to um, reference later. So I'm going to call this Spotify Library. And then go ahead and hit OK on that. And then go back. And then you're going to want to scroll back to keys. Now here's where it gets a little uh, complicated at first. But uh, once you get the hang of this, it's really easy to do this to other different buttons. So we're going to replace home here. And instead of clicking on home, what we're going to do is scroll all the way down to multi-action. And then once you're inside of multi-action, you're going to add a conditional. So scroll all the way down to where it says conditional. If you click on conditional, you're going to get this if then else statement. What we're only going to use in this case because we're using multi actions is we're only going to use the if portion of this uh, this comparison here. So if you click on if, you scroll all the way down to where you see app focused and then choose in this case I'm going to choose Spotify because this is the app I care about. So essentially what you're saying is that if you're in Spotify and this button is pressed, then do something and this something is going to be uh, inserting a gesture. So let me find it here. I believe it's insert, yeah, inject gesture. And then you're going to choose Spotify library and hit select. And then on the top right, hit the check mark. And then you're going to see that if Spotify is currently focused or if it's the focus app, then when you press that button, inject the gesture, the Spotify library gesture. Uh, and then all you have to do is click on the check mark up here and then navigate back to Spotify. And then when you press, uh, if I click on home, uh, when I press the actual D-pad right button on the 8-bit 2 controller, it should press that automatically for me now. So I'll press it now. And sure enough, it pressed uh, that location for me automatically uh, based on that button press. So we can do uh, more actions and, and more apps. You do the exact same thing. You'll just go back to exposed edge. And then you're going to tap and hold on this and hit edit action. And then you simply just add another action to this multi-action. So let's say if Google Map is focused, then you're going to inject a new gesture that you recorded um, in the gesture, um, the gesture library in the previous screen. So that's it. You can do that as many times as you want for as many apps to any button on the controller to make uh, controlling all those different apps and have contextually aware buttons for every app as you see fit. It's pretty powerful. Uh, and it's a great way to be able to control your uh, tablet without having to touch it. So one thing to note about the 8 do controller is that when you turn the car off and it loses power, this controller will go to sleep after about five minutes. Um, and when, the, when you turn the car back on and the tablet turns back on, it doesn't automatically reconnect if the uh, controller is actually asleep. So you would have to press one of these buttons in order for it to reconnect. And I wasn't a huge fan of that. I really wanted to just get in my car and have this automatically connected and everything working. So what I did was I connected this controller to an external battery pack located uh, in the armrest here. And uh, what this does is keep the tablet power, or I'm sorry, the controller powered even when the car is off. Um, and this is connected to an actual USB port that is located inside the armrest as well. So this stays charged and this keeps this powered and charged even when the car is off. So when I turn the car back on, this will automatically connect to the tablet without me having to do anything um, with one piece of software called the Bluetooth Auto Connect. So with Bluetooth Auto Connect and the external battery pack, the tablet and the controller will automatically repair without you having to do anything. All right, so the last thing that I wanted to mention was that I personally found auto brightness to be very unreliable while driving. 
you know, sun sun conditions will change quite a bit. You know, clouds will go overhead, and it constantly is adjusting the brightness. Or at night, especially, streetlights will really start to mess with auto brightness. So I ended up writing my own application that you're uh, free to use. Uh, if you go to the Play Store and search for an application called Auto Bright, what this does is sync your brightness based on the sunrise and sunset of your current location. So this is great for using for in-vehicle tablets. Uh, and will allow you to adjust your brightness automatically. That just happens and runs in the background. It uses almost no memory and will sync your uh, tablet brightness between sunrise and sunset. And you can tweak all the different parameters to make it perfect for you. So uh, if you do end up using it, uh, let me know what you think. And if you have any issues, just leave a comment or leave a review and be happy to uh, hear your thoughts. All right, so hopefully this video has been helpful for you. And if you have any additional questions about any of the steps here, um, feel free to ask those in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and also on the flip side, if you have any improvements to the process, uh, feel free to please share those with the community. Uh, because I know this is, this is not the best way to create an in-vehicle tablet experience. This is just my way of doing it. And I know there are lots of improvements out there that you guys can make. So if you guys see any improvements or you want to share your videos and your installation, please do so. I'd absolutely love to see them. So thanks for watching and I hope this video has been helpful for you. Happy hacking.